Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat while I tell you about a not-so-little game, Zephyr Winds of Change by Portal Dragon. So, what is this game? Well, as you can see by the cover, it's pretty clear. This is a game about steampunk aerial ships. It is about combat, it is about exploration, it is exciting, it is thematic. It's also a co-op game that revolves around trying to complete missions. And the game comes with eight different missions. The different mission that you're trying to achieve will affect how you go about actually winning the game, losing the game, etc. But the way the game works is that it's broken down into days, and each day you'll have a movement phase where you go on assignments or patrolling. And these will then result in you drawing either skirmishes for combats or scavengers for other explorations that you might want to do. And you might need to do a certain number of these to, in order to complete the mission. You might just be doing them in order to build up so that you're able to complete the mission. Because as you do combat and gain stuff, you're able to build up and improve your ship by new and better upgrades, which build into your deck of cards that you can use. So at the beginning of the game, you don't have that many cards, you've just got your basic cards. And then as you buy upgrades, and the different ships can take different types of upgrades. There are three different types, and the different numbers of upgrades they can take is different of each type. So that means it's very asymmetric with regards to which ship you're using. You will do the combats by playing your cards, and this is also how you resolve other kind of situations a lot of the time it will be play a certain number of cards and your ability to play cards is limited by your crew as a captain you can play any card you want but your crew will then allow you to play a specific type of card so that's a very interesting factor of this the way combat works is it's all simultaneous so you're picking your cards and then you will have your enemy ship and they have a set abilities and you're rolling to determine what the enemy does and you're hoping that you played your cards correctly in order to anticipate what your opponent was going to do and it feels like a real dogfight because of that and you'll destroy ships, you'll build up, you'll complete your missions that is this game so what do I think of it? well let's start with the art the art, I think, is very good. It does build into the theme. The one thing is with these ship mats, you can see you can't really see the ship that clearly once you've got the holes and the symbols, compared to if you look at the other side, it's this gorgeous image of the ship. But, you know, it is good art. I quite like it. The characters are a bit odd-looking to my tastes, but for the most part it does draw you into the game and immerses you into this steampunk world. So components, there's huge amounts to talk about component wise. We'll start with these little scrap meters. Um, they're kind of a bit of a novelty but they do work very nicely and they're not a bad addition to the game. The cubes for tracking various things throughout the game are reasonable. The dice are quite nice and interesting. I like that they are a bit different, they have a bit of a steampunky feel to them. Rather than miniatures, all we have is standees, but I think the standees work very well because they have that attractive art of the ships on them. The player boards themselves, I may have complained from an art point of view about these divots for tokens to go in, but that's actually quite nice, it means stuff doesn't slide around and works nicely. With regards to all the cards, the component quality is fine. I wouldn't say it's especially high or especially low. All the tokens are, again, just reasonable quality. So what about the gameplay? Well, I've really enjoyed this. The key to good co-op games, for my taste, is that it's got to have cooperation and it's got to have challenge. Now. The game's challenge is very variable depending on the mission you're playing and then it can be variable based on luck, but I'll come to that shortly. So with regards to challenge, there definitely is a challenge there. There's a sense of improving and developing and working towards achieving your missions and you do feel like you're doing that together for the most part, but it can be a bit solitaire. 
because you can be off doing your assignment or your combat and other person is off doing theirs and another person is off doing theirs and you're all kind of just playing your own little individual games at that point so that's kind of a small shame that it does have that sort of solitaire aspect it could do with more to pull it together now it does have this kind of ally system that you can go on assignments together and you're all working together on that assignment which is quite nice except for in some of the missions and some earlier tiers of the harder missions you can find that you just kind of go on assignments on your own because they tend to be a bit of a walk in the park sometimes and you can find yourself doing that and then you because you all have to go on at the beginning it's kind of you either all go on and it's too easy or you don't all go on and it's too hard it can be quite hard to judge and that's that's really what a lot of this comes down to because if you do all go on the same mission you're not being very efficient with regards to those assignments and trying to complete them so that does then introduce a almost a gambling aspect of do you reckon you can take it or not and that brings me to my next point which I did touch on a short while ago that there can, it can be quite luck heavy this game now it's not too bad yes you can have quite a lot of luck with regards to the dice rolls for the enemy whether they're actually attacking you or not but that tends to balance out and work very well in my opinion what doesn't work so well is mainly the commander cards because commander you'll be like oh this is going to be really hard this is really hard oh no extra ships and then you get the one card in here that's draw three extra ships and it's like yeah so we've been doing fine and then suddenly this really 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 hard guy and there's no way to kind of anticipate that so I don't know if it's just that card is a bit overpowered I think maybe yeah the I think maybe if the number of ships was more closely related to tiers so that you could gauge that better, maybe then it wouldn't be so bad. But as I say, I've really enjoyed this game. I think it is a fantastic thematic experience. The choices that you make tend to be more with regards to what you're buying and then looking at the cards in your hand, deciding what to play, trying to anticipate. As I touched on when I was going through the brief explanation of the rules, the game does feel very dogfighty when you're doing the combat and I found that playing this I tend to always choose to go a more combaty route because I just find it a more enjoyable experience because I really think that the combat system just really so well makes it feel like you're a dog in a dogfight especially if you play my favourite ship the Spitfire Rogue because it has things like you know avoiding attacks that cause them to attack themselves and stuff and you have the whole right I'm just gonna barrel in firing and not dodge and you get extra damage and so that really really does work nicely and going back to having said that it was solitaire something that helps pull it back from that solitaire aspect is that if you are in shared locations if you are in an assignment together or you're just patrolling together and you defeat yours and the other person had a very hard one you can then go and help them so that is a useful thing of the game that draws you back into doing combats together for example and most missions will have events that will involve all the players working together for that final event type thing which again pulls it back to being a good co-op experience so that is Zephyr Winds of Change, a really good, fun, thematic game. And I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.